This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn now to an explosive new investigation by The Intercept that reveals how international private security firm Tiger Swan targeted Dakota Access water protectors with military-style counterterrorism measures. Tiger Swan began as a U.S. military and State Department contractor. It was hired by Energy Transfer Partners, the company behind the 3.8 billion Dakota Access pipeline. The investigation is based on leaked internal documents, which show how Tiger Swan collaborated closely with law enforcement agencies to surveil and target the nonviolent indigenous-led movement. In the documents, Tiger Swan also repeatedly calls the water protectors, quote, insurgents, and the movement a, quote, ideologically driven insurgency. The Intercept also reports that Tiger Swan did not limit themselves to monitoring activists. They also tried to change the narrative about them on social media. This is a clip of Robert Rice, who hosted a series of online videos critical of the pipeline protest movement without disclosing that he was working for Tiger Swan. This clip is from a show that aired under the name Defend Iowa. As you've probably heard, a group of protesters from Standing Rock have formed a camp near Williamsburg in Iowa County. Their stated goal is to build the camp from 20 people to at least 100 people by midsummer. They say they want to develop new ways to fight pipelines. Now, let us be clear. We are not against peaceful protesting. However, many of the members of this cell have been part of the destruction in Standing Rock last year. And they've all been posting regularly on social media about how they refuse to be part of society. That means constantly asking for money and support from locals. We are not here to convince you they shouldn't be welcomed into your community. We just want to make you aware of the full situation to keep you informed. Defend Iowa will provide helpful information to help you stay in the loop on what's happening with this group. That clip of Robert Rice, who worked for Tiger Swan, as discovered and reported by The Intercept. For more, we're joined by two guests. Aline Brown is with us, a reporter with The Intercept, lead author of the story that's headlined, Leaked Documents Reveal Counterterrorism Tactics Used at Standing Rock to Defeat Pipeline Insurgencies. And joining us from Washington, D.C., Tara Hauska, National Campaigns Director for Honor the Earth. She's Ojibwe from the Kuchiching First Nation. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Aline, why don't you lay out? what you found. Sure. So we received more than 100 documents from a Tiger Swan contractor, um, alongside um, a number of other documents via a public information request, that describe in detail um, not only the tactics used by this private security firm, which include aerial surveillance, infiltration of um, pipeline opponent groups, um, and uh, the, an effort to, to alter the narrative using videos like this one featuring Robert Rice. But give us the history of Tiger Swan. Sure, sure. So Tiger Swan started out um, as a rival to the mercenary uh, company Blackwater um, during the war in Iraq. Um, so, you know, its, its employees are largely former special ops um, military guys, um, a lot of them coming from Delta Force. Um, and so these guys really came up, um, you know, thinking of their work as counterinsurgency work. So, so they think of these um, these water protectors and describe them in the documents as um, compare them to jihadist terrorists, for example. And do you know when Tiger Swan started working with Energy Transfer Partners, and whether what you discovered does it does it demonstrate that what Tiger Swan did was in fact illegal? Um, so, Tiger Swan started working uh, with Energy Transfer Partners after um, this incident where um, another private security firm sick dogs on, um, on, on water protectors. Um, you know, Amy Goodman, of course, was, was there. Um, so That was the video we showed from Labor Day weekend, when the water protectors came up on the property, where they did not expect to see the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, uh, bulldozers excavating what they called their sacred land, and the security guards unleash dogs on the water protectors who are biting the people and their horses. 
Right. So after that incident, Tiger Swan came on as sort of a manager for all these various small uh, security firms that were involved. Um, and in fact, they did not even receive a license to operate as a security firm in North Dakota, uh, framing themselves as a management and IT consultant rather than, you know, saying they provide no security work. After your article was published, Aline, in The Intercept, North Dakota indigenous activist and organizer Candy Mossett posted a picture of a small device on Facebook, writing, quote, "'This bug was found under a table in a room at the Prairie Nights Casino in October 2016. I do believe it's a violation of some sort for a hotel to bug their rooms. I'm sure this belongs to Tiger Swan. After reading The Intercept article, I was reminded of this. And I'd like to bring in Tara Hauska now. Uh, Tara Hauska, um, is with Honor the Earth. Uh, she is Ojibwe, spent a good deal of time out at the resistance camps in North Dakota. Your response to both what um, Candy wrote and found, do you know about this bug that they found, and to the overall article um, in The Intercept? I saw a number of people posting about various um, devices that were discovered, and I heard stories about them when I was out of the camps. Um, we were very aware of the fact that we were being surveilled, heavily surveilled. And to see this article come out kind of just, you know, basically reinforced and showed, you know, this is what was really happening. There was this conspiring happening between police officers and a private security firm, and we were basically being treated as terrorists. And, you know, this kind of just this talk about destruction um, of Standing Rock, we were trying to protect Standing Rock. We were trying to protect the water. Um, so it's—, it's just, you know, validates everything we were saying. And, and Tara, the, the article in The Intercept—sorry, uh, the document uh, that Tiger Swan prepared for energy transfer partners uh, on what was happening at the camp at Standing Rock uh, talked about the presence of Palestinians uh, at the resistance camp uh, and the movement's involvement with Islamic individuals. Uh, they go on to say that this is a dynamic that requires further examination. Currently, there's no information to suggest terrorism type tactics or operations. However, with the current limitation on information flow out of the camp, it cannot be ruled out. Could you comment on that? I think throughout those documents, we see this, you know, narrative of, you know, they also suggest that we had weapons around camp when this is a completely unarmed resistance. Um, to discuss Palestinians, you know, trying to paint this model of violence and, you know, these insurgency tactics. Um, we gain support from people all over the world. You know, this is a very clear issue of people defending water. You know, the, the, the movement was water is life. Um, so to try and, you know, do this, it, it created in turn this, this dynamic where, you know, as people going out and exercising our constitutional rights, you know, the response was incredibly violent, incredibly brutal, and ended with people being treated as animals, you know, being put into dog kennels. This is a very real thing that happened on U.S. soil. And it's a continuation of the treatment of indigenous people since the beginning of the relationship with the United States. You know, one of the last armed conflicts in the U.S. was with indigenous people. The, the so-called battle, but really massacre that happened at Wounded Knee is one of those last moments where the U.S. used these type of weapons. And again, in the American Indian movement. So this is, you know, an ongoing thing and an ongoing narrative of um, painting native people as violent. I want to go to one of the documents referenced in the Intercept piece, where Aline writes um, uh, that in an October 3rd report, Tiger Swan discusses how to use its knowledge of internal camp dynamics. They write, quote, exploitation of ongoing native versus non-native rifts and tribal rifts between peaceful and violent elements is critical in our effort to delegitimize the anti-DAPL movement, Aline. Yes. I mean, that's a theme we see again and again in the documents, this um, note, noting um, rifts in the movement, um, you know, and, and framing that as important to Tiger Swan's efforts at, um, at undermining the movement. So, yep. And, Tara, if you can respond to this, um, Tiger Swan, uh, started by what Delta Force, a uh, person from Delta Force, um, uh, exploiting tensions within the camp and what you experienced of this. This was a, this was an entirely new community that was created, 
Um, you know, it was people that were coming together for a united cause, but obviously coming from all walks of life. And there were tensions in camp. There were tensions that existed. However, this was a very, you know, unified front of people peacefully defending water. Um, and peacefully, you know, trying to change a narrative and trying to, you know, stop this corporate takeover of our, our natural resources and of our continued survival. Um, it does not surprise me at all that those, you know, tactics were being used. The divide and conquer method is one that has been employed against Native people um, and against now movements. Um, they also discussed how they are looking now at other pipeline, you know, insurgencies. These are people trying to protect their water and saying no. Um, so, to exploit that and try to fractionate the movements just tells us, as organizers on the ground, we have to be extremely unified and all come together and remind ourselves continuously of what we're there for. Tara, very quickly, is oil flowing through the Dakota Access Pipeline? Uh, Donald Trump um, says he is against leaks, but not this kind. Apparently, there have been a few leaks in the Dakota Access Pipeline. Is it flowing? And finally, can you respond to this latest news that's just coming over the wires, multiple news outlets? ABC, CBS say President Trump is poised to pull the United States out of the landmark 2015 Paris climate change deal. Oil flowing at Thapple and the climate change deal. You know, the, 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 pipe, the Dakota Access Pipeline isn't even operational yet, and it's already had a number of leaks. Um, so oil is not flowing in the sense of it being fully ready to go, but there's already leaks happening. So exactly what we were talking about this entire time, this concern about leaking happening, is already happening before it's even operating. And as far as the Paris Climate Change Accord goes, you know, it's not surprising at all from hearing from a president that said, we're basically going to turn this, this process into a rubber stamping, you know, situation and deregulate, deprotect all these resources. Um, so it's very disappointing, and I'm hopeful that other world leaders step up and, you know, hold the United States accountable for this. Last question. If it's not operating, how is it leaking? Because they've been testing it. So they're testing uh. at various pump stations, and it's already leaking. Tara House of Honor the Earth, Aileen Brown, a reporter with The Intercept, we will link to your piece. That does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Happy birthday to Angie Karen.